Hey everybody, how's it going? So tonight we're going to talk about a couple of tips and tricks on how to print your parts quickly and efficiently. And we're going to do it more around thinking about print orientation and design for manufacturability. Um, rather than like tweaking your profile and, you know, tips and tricks like that. So this is an iterative process that you, that, that you should, should be going through arguably on every part, at least ones that you're going to be spending a lot of time printing time and time again, is how after proving your design, proving that it works and you're going to be pumping out a bunch of these, how can you make this more, uh, you know, faster, better, cheaper type of thing? Uh, so this is a pretty simple part that I print on a regular basis. It's a, this simple pill-shaped box. It's not very big. It's maybe like three by four by two, maybe an inch and a half tall or something like that, right? It's not, it's not very big. I've got this cutout in the center, and then I've got a, a cutout below. So this thing basically accepts a mechanical assembly inside the bottom of the part that I have to essentially glue in or epoxy in to make sure it doesn't fall out. I've got a couple little uh, trenches that run across the top just to sort of give it a little bit of design distinction. Um, but in printing in this orientation like you normally would, right? This is how you designed it. This is how, you know, a lot of us would, would generally think about printing it in this orientation. Obviously, I need some supports here, right? I can't print in midair. That stuff below, so let's add some supports. Create auto supports are just fine for our cases here. Uh, and if we go through uh, our simple, you know, slicing template, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I've got set up. It's, it's very basic. I'm printing out actually a pretty tall layer height, a, a 0.24 layer height with a 0.2 base layer. Um, I've got a 10% infill turned on uh, and I've got six top and bottom solid layers. Pretty basic. Uh, this is gonna leave like a line pattern on my top surface, which is okay. Um, I did wanna sort of try and shy away from the from the traditional 3d printed um, look and feel of this thing completely even though it is 3d printed but um, we'll get to that in a second so if i hit okay on this and i just go slice <clears throat> we come out with three hours and 42 minutes and two dollars and 29 cents that's not horrible that's about what this ought to be for this size part in this orientation with that much support material um, you know i could probably shave a little bit off by maybe doing a six percent or a five percent infill uh, I could probably shave a couple of pennies here or there, but it's not going to save a ton of time. Um, <clears throat> but once I proved the part, right, so from a prototype perspective, I, I knew that it worked. I knew I could get the mechanical assembly in there and it would stay in there as long as I glued it. It was good. So then, then I turned my attention to now how can I print this more effectively? How can I get this out cheaper, better, faster? Uh, and, and if I can do anything from a 3D printer perspective, I can lay down a good first layer. I know for sure I can lay down a good first layer. Um, and I've recently, at least for this part, switched to that textured build surface. So laying down a good first layer is, has become just a tad bit easier now. Um, and for this part, with that textured surface, the, surface, the top surface becomes a little bit more matte. Um, it blends in some of those, the, 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 the line and rectilinear pattern a little bit because those, those lines get blended together. So from that perspective, then why not just flip this over and rotate it and print it in this orientation. And if I do that, well, then I don't need supports. So if I turn off my supports and get rid of all that, um, I probably save some time here. I still need a little bit of infill, right? Uh, for the inside of the 10%, but because I'm not wasting all that time in here, I should I should now save some time and money. So let's see that. If we just use the same slicing template, don't change nothing else. Obviously it's not gonna print supports, it's slice. We should have a distinct change. So now we're down to three hours and six minutes, down from 342, and we've cut, uh, I don't know, what, 25 cents off the part or something like that. So that's not horrible. That's pretty good, I can live with that, it's better. Uh, so I did that a couple times, but I still ended up having to glue the mechanical assembly inside to make sure it didn't fall out. I got a nice textured surface on what the user would consider the top surface now, using that textured pattern, and laid down a good first layer, all that good stuff. And then I turned my attention to, well, I don't want to have that extra, that extra operation of gluing this thing in. I'm lazy. Peel it off the bed, put it together, get it gone. That's all I want to do. So, so if that's my goal, then how can I now design features around that particular goal in mind? So I don't need these top layers, right, in this, in this orientation. This, this surface is non-value added, literally. Um, and I could probably do away with, if I wanted to do away with the gluing perspective, then I need to rethink this whole pocket here. So I went through another design iteration. I got rid of this guy. I'm bringing another one here. 
And so here's the new one, right? Top looks exactly the same, no problem. Bottom now looks a little different. So if we flip this guy over, because this is how I'm gonna print this, now we can see we've got some distinction going on. So instead of that square pocket here in the middle, I've got this more of like a compression spring design. So now this is slightly smaller than the, the dimension between these walls is now slightly smaller than the mechanical assembly that goes in there. So when I press it in, it actually holds the thing in place quite well. I was surprisingly well. Um, this thing doesn't have to like hold up the shake or anything like that. This is not that kind of thing. Someone throws it across the room and breaks it, that ain't covered under warranty. It just needs to hold it. Uh, and I don't want to use the extra step and time of glue. Uh, and so I don't need, so now I'm saving on infill material because I really don't need any infill. I don't need anything going around here. I'm doing this all with shells. I'm doing four shells. So now if we slice this thing differently, I'm going to use this other template, which is essentially just a copy of the other one. Uh, but we'll look at the, the key differentiators between this. So I'm doing it all with shells, like I said. The layer height's completely the same. I've gotten rid of my infill, so that's now 0%. And I've got eight bottom layers, really the top, right, from the user perspective. And I don't care about the top layers. I don't care how the, uh, how the stuff looks. The bottom is inconsequential to the user. They're going to pick this thing up maybe once a year uh, to, to swap out a battery. It, it's not, nothing on the bottom is needed here. So why spend the time and material in printing it? Uh, and then I've got, uh, let's, so we'll turn off support. It's not that it's gonna print any anyway. So if we hit okay here, we should now be able to see a very distinct difference in the time and cost. So here we go, here's the new time. It's two hours and 30 minutes. Remember our, our initial was three hours and 42 minutes. So we've basically shaved a full third off of this part now. And we've got our cost down from 229 down to 148. So if this is a part that you're sort of semi-mass producing at least as much as you can, uh, or a part like it, then you've done it quite a bit here to, to shave off and increase your margins. Um, so, so again, right now I can get more out per day, right? I have to spend less time now assembling. So I've improved my cost basis for this part by reducing features and processes that I no longer need. Uh, so if we look at the preview real fast on this, um, it's, it's pretty basic, right? So again, I'm doing everything with, inf with, uh, with shells and essentially telling it to go ahead and fill shells, uh, with a single extrusion. And so it's basically just printing the whole thing relatively solid. And I got the extra benefit of having this particular top surface, have this, um, have this design with a couple of layers and then it immediately starts throwing a solid layer on top. And there was a, an added benefit of it. It kind of gave it a cool... I don't know, kind of unique texture to it that I liked. It was, it was, uh, it wasn't expected, but I actually, after looking at it for a minute, I was like, that's kind of unique. I like that. Um, now again, this is, this is specific to my part, but printing, print orientation and, and removing design features that are non-value added to your part or something you should be going through that process anyway. So <clears throat> I hope this is helpful to somebody. Please like and subscribe. Um, and we'll do some more videos. Oh, and here's the part, I mean, by the way. So not just to like show that I won't do anything, but there's the part, there's the, tr the, the troughs are in there with the design pattern, and then there's the backside of it. So this thing works very well. I have just enough spring in there to hold the mechanical piece. Came out great, all the time. So there you go. Um, hope this helps, talk to you soon.